All right, coming up next, it's a UFC middleweight division fight. Well, this is about as decorated a kickboxer as has come into this division in some time, DC. And if we get a kickboxing match tonight, he ain't losing. He is a championship-level kickboxer, a guy that can stand in the pocket and trade and kick and punch with anyone. He's constantly throwing things from as close as you can get. He's comfortable throwing leg kicks. He will drive knees into your body. But it's the aggressiveness and the ability and willingness to stand in the pocket and trade that makes him truly, truly special. I think that is what separates kickboxing, the high level yeah. from everyone else. He understands distance as well as any striker in this division. Of course, that is a byproduct of a lifetime of repetitions in the kickboxing space. All right, here he is for my money. Might be the most well-rounded fighter in this division. A true mixed martial artist at his core, and he believes he'll have a lot of advantages in this matchup. Tonight. Everyone talked about him being well-rounded. It's unbelievable to watch a guy that can do everything across the board at such a high level. Yeah, he's comfortable wherever the fight goes. Maybe he'll grapple tonight, maybe he'll strike. Makes him a hard guy to prepare for. Our tail of the tape for this middleweight fight. So these fighters are just a year apart with some differences in height and a similar reach. All right, now for the particulars, we go inside the octagon to Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening. And when the action begins, our referee in charge of the octagon, Dan Bergliata. And now, this is the moment you've all waiting for live from the MGM Grand Garden Arena in Las Vegas it's time five rounds in the USC middleweight division introducing first fighting out of the blue corner this man is a kickboxer holding a professional record of Seven wins, one loss. He stands six feet four inches tall, weighing in at 184 pounds. Fighting out of Sao Paulo, Brazil, Alex Poetan Perea! And now introducing his opponent, fighting out of the right corner. This man is a mixed martial artist, holding professional record of 15 wins, six losses. He stands five feet 11 inches tall, weighing in at 185 pounds. Fighting out of Glendale, Arizona, USA! All right, commit to the rules of the locker room. I want you to obey my commands at all times, protect yourself at all times. On a nice, clean, safe fight. Touch gloves, match your corners, come out. They touch them up, and we are underway. a big time fight. It feels like a big moment for both of these guys' career. Who is going to be able to implement their game plan the best in this matchup between these two big time athletes? Nice punch lands over the top. And now he engages in a Muay Thai clinch and I think a lot of people watching wonder how you can control an opponent like that. Hard to get out of. It's very difficult to get out of. Look and notice how tight his elbows are as he's maneuvering and moving his opponent into position where he can get off the strikes. Single collar tie now. Oh, 
Nice jab there. He told us on Thursday he wanted to break this dude's nose. That is certainly a step in the right direction. Mission accomplished. You are battering that nose. Oh, nice jab. He has a commitment to kick it tonight, and it shows. Jared Cannonier with that powerful right hand tonight. You got to be careful not to eat too many more of those. He made his debut as a heavyweight. Right. And now he's down at 185 pounds just demolishing dudes. Jared Cannonier is a beast. He's a savage. And whoever gets the octagon, you better know they got the hand. Well, this striker has come out swinging early, and you know his style is based on aggression, and largely it's worked out for him tonight. It's worked out for Dom. Fighting and he's fighting exactly as he needs to if he wants to win this fight. So just over 20 total strikes have landed for Jared Kennedy. Look at him chopping the wood. Chop the wood with those leg kicks. Beautiful straight punch there. His boxing fundamentals are just so clean. Oh, he looks so sharp tonight. Big punch lands over the top. How's he gonna follow this one? There by Kennedy. There's no gill on that leg kick. Stuffs the takedown there. How good is his takedown defense? Well, he continues to do a nice job here defensively, protecting his head, raising the guard, and really frustrating the offensive fighter a little bit. Lesson one in boxing class. Hands up, chin down. He's got to whip his hip into that kick. Ooh. Kick lands, he's hurt. Oh, killer jab there from Jared Cannonier. Amazing to think where he would have been had he got an earlier start at MMA. He's only been at this for a few years and obviously has realized incredible results. It's scary, right? It's scary. It's scary to think who this guy would be if he started doing this early. But you live in the here and now, right? And Jared Cannonier is taking full advantage of every opportunity that he's given. Punch over the top. All right, so he lands another hook. He's already landed several in the round. That one might have been the most significant. That was the best one. But what I like about him throwing his punch over and over again, he just has a fantastic ability to land that punch. Big right hook coming as well. well single collar tie here. Missed with that right hand. Got it going now. Nice connection there, DC. Another punch land. DC didn't take him long to find his range here tonight, huh? His timing is on point. Right hand on point. Good defense to block the strike coming back. Well, if you're going to leave your body that wide open, you're going to pay the price, and he certainly did there as his opponent lands flush to the midsection. And there comes the separation now. Beautiful one. He had it hurt. Oh, nice. Nice. Well, DC, if you're a young striker, I would think watching this guy would give you a lot of tricks of the trade. Just beautiful to watch him work for those hooks. You watch him as a young fighter. You watch the little details to his striking, how he slips off the center line and he returns with that beautiful hook. Over and over, he is finding that shot. Man, striking class is in session. Beautiful punch there. Great job landing. What a damaging punch. Beautiful technique on the straight right hand. Timing his shots nicely here, champ. He's doing a great job of mixing everything up and using a lot of diverse strikes. Now we take a look back at some of the action in that previous round, DC. A lot to like on both sides, really. I mean, both were intent on going forward. And what happens when nobody wants to take a step back? They meet in the middle. That's exactly what they did, and they both found success over the course of that round. All right, we'll see how it goes here in this next round. A high number of kicks landed there in the previous round. And at some point, these are going to really start to take their time. They do start to take an effect on everything. Oh! You need to start looking to finish now because he's got his opponent hurt very bad. Oh! Well, DC, 
see headgear's not allowed, but he has raised the hands and he's doing a nice job protecting the dome. He's doing a great job of blocking his head. A lot of times, those shots to the head will knock you out. Not this time. This guy's making sure nothing lands. Just out of range with that right hand. Ooh, nice slip there to avoid the punch by the Alaskan Jared Cannoneer. And he's looking for that left hand, just missed. Stuffs the takedown, no problem. Starting to do some really significant damage to the body here. Another strike lands there. Look at the whip action that comes from him throwing that kick. All right, so Jared Cannonier with a beautiful one-two, and really every time you fight, you want to present a more developed, better version. That has certainly been the case every step of the way for Kennedy. Yeah, Cannonier was a good prospect when he entered the U.S. Now, you can see the finished product. You can see a guy. Oh! Huge right hand! Dude's hurt. Serve him up. Go get him. Oh, oh! Keeps going. Whoa! He's in trouble. He's hurt bad. Oh, big left hook there. Whoa! Back to the feet. What a fight. Well, he was a little bit lackluster in round one. You can't say the same here in this second round. He has really picked up the pace an uptick in the aggression and the output, and starting to find his range here in the pocket. Nice head movement to slip the left hand. Big call for punch land. Now he gets back to range. Cannoneer gets caught by the inside leg. Oh, he hurt him! Oh, tags him with the straight. Nice job there by the Alaskan Jared Cannoneer. How good is that right here? Oh, nice job to block the kick. Nice job of hiding that hit. All right, so he lands another punch there, and he smells blood in the water. Going right back at that. Absolutely. The opponent has a lot of scar tissue around the eyes. He was able to cut it open, and now he's just touching it over and over again. And a nice job at least staying upright on that. Oh, nice. Nice loop and punch. Oh, he lands another strike to the body. He's really starting to connect on a lot of shots to the midsection. And these will take... Oh! What a fantastic strike to throw at the exact right moment. He deserves this moment. Go finish this fight. Now, the guy's attacking the triangle. He finds himself in trouble because he got a little bit lazy in the full guard. Looks like he's trying to manipulate the head. This could be tight. Oh, nice. And this might just be a matter of time. Wow. All right, right into side control here, DC. Biggest difference between half guard and side control. Well, side control to me feels like a little bit less control because now my legs aren't really doing anything anymore. Now I'm controlling you with my upper body. So I've got to be very, very aware. It's still advantageous, but it just seems a little more free-flowing than having something like a half guard. Well, these are some excellent ground and pound strikes here, DC. There's an efficiency with which he operates in these situations. He knows exactly when to throw, exactly when to hold, and it's allowing him to really control the grappling aspect of the fight. There's a song there, right? Know when to hold him, know when, when to hold him. Yep, there absolutely. Useful strike there, the ground and pound on point tonight. All right, so pretty good damage here with the ground and pound. Nothing superficial about these strikes. They are intending to hunt. Oh, yeah, he's landing very accurately, and he's landing to get damage. And that's the end of round number two.
Agora você vai se preparar para tirar. Well, I'm not sure the extent to which he has recovered, but we do see the end of the round. DC talk us through the replay. Well, he's a tough guy. He's going to make it to the stool. He's going to survive unless you put him completely out of there. Unfortunately, he's in there with a guy that does have that ability. You ready? You ready? Third round underway. Well, most fighters can't keep up this type of aggression and pace, but you don't have to worry about this guy. He hasn't really showed any signs of slowing down tonight. All right, he engages in a single collar tie here. And now he's got that tie clinch. We'll see what he can do with it. Left hand punch from the clinch. Nice body kick. Oh, huge block! Big punch land. Oh! Splits the guard, lands the right hand. Well, there are a few things more fun to watch in mixed martial arts than these type of transitions and scrambles on the ground. High-level grappling can really be entertaining. All right, well, both fighters pretty comfortable on the ground, DC, but you got to be very careful hanging out here for too long if you're his opponent. Strong bottom work here, staying busy. Pretty significant welt to the left side. Cannoneer's attempting to pass here, but he's denied by the defense. Oh, nice job here staying busy off of his back. Nice offense from the box. Strong bottom work here, staying busy. Let's do great, guys. Let's do great. What a punch. Oh. Oh. Bottom fighter here, maybe looking to hip escape, DC. Oh, nice work from the bottom. Tags him with the punch. Beautiful movement, hip work on the ground here, just outstanding with the transition. He is not staying in one place on the ground, and that's very important. Three minutes to go. Lined it up on the right there to no avail. Look at the control and the posture as that big knee lands. Oh, continuing to work the body to great effect. Great punch. Oh, a huge block there. Torso starting to bruise pretty good here. Lands a glancing right hand upstairs. Another one. Yep. Up oh, and the left hand. And they separate. Straight right. He misses. Ball left hook to the head. It's oh! And just like that, the fight is over. Yeah, that right there is a high-level knockout, ladies and gentlemen. Crowd absolutely loving it. Just a perfect shot to end the fight. Landed flush. I'm not even sure his opponent saw it coming. So a huge, huge win for that young fighter here tonight. Well, he's going to enjoy watching this one back. Let's take a look at the replay of the knockout just a moment ago. It was right hand after right hand after right hand. Finally, he found the one that hit the exact sweet spot that ended his opponent's night. All right, the official decision is in. It resides with Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Dan Brigliotta has called a stop to this contest at three minutes of the third round. Declaring the winner by knockout, Jared the Killer Gorilla Cannonier. And there is the man of the moment, and what a moment this must be like for a professional athlete, right? I know you enjoyed the birth of your kids, right? Yeah. But you knock out a man in a cage fight, I can't think of anything better. I mean, there's nothing like it. You know, you don't even hear the one that lands that puts out your opponent's lights. And tonight, he got that done. 
and he should be very proud of the work he and his coaches got done tonight.